What's going on YouTube? This is your boy Chart Slayer and once again, ba ba ba, I am back with another video. Today we're going to be going over my October analytics and I am actually excited because I love this new series because it's a journal for me. It helps me understand um, how everything is going to play out in my personal opinion, how my success is going to be going on. I'm gonna be real with you, right? October wasn't really the best month for me. I mean, I'm just gonna be real, it wasn't the best month. The worst month of my entire career was May. August wasn't the best. We all know what's going on in August. October wasn't the best because it was naturally a corrective month. Um, and it's not like, you know, I was having massive like falls or anything. It's just the fact that, you know, I could have done better, right? And I haven't actually finished journaling the October uh, success. So let's go ahead and get right into it. I'm going to journal it right now. You guys are going to see how I journal my own trades on my uh, specific performance analyzer and journaling. And I really want to break down how I do this. And it's really important that you guys see this. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm on here right now. I'm going, here's my phone. So I'm going to just pull it up. So you got, so we can actually put this in together. Uh, let's, let me go here. Boom. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So let me go ahead and go to the month or did I actually already place these trades? We about to find out. All right. So let's go to my result tracker. Let's go to my result tracker and we're going to go to 1030, 1030. Oh, I did. I put everything in for October. So that's good. <laughs> I'm ahead of myself. Okay. So as you can see, this is my specific analytics. Um, this is my journal. So I like to journal my trades. This is, um, let me show you. This is my specific before and after screenshot. So I'm able to look at those, what type of entries I have. Uh, this is my specific uh, deposit information, key information and such. But this is the part where we're gonna actually focus on, All right? So October, as you can see here, October wasn't really the best, right? As you can tell, I really was not good. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. Like I'm only negative 0.03%, but I'm gonna be real with you, I don't like losing, but I know it's part of the game, right? So 0.03%, I was pretty much at a break even this month. I literally was at a break even month and that happens, right? That I'm at a break even. That's not that's not, that's 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 decent because last month I was at 9.937 percent. That's a great month, right? So to come from a September to a boom, a 0.56 to a break even is kind of like bummer. Like dang, I was I had high hopes, but I'm not thinking of myself as a god. So I don't want you guys to really think that I'm that I'm looking at myself like that. I'm not. So if we look at October, I wasn't really. I, I kind of like. It wasn't really good for the the long side. On the on the short side, eh, break even. So I was a little bit less in the long and I was a little bit more in the shorts, right? So it wasn't that much, but mind you, we're in a corrective month. If we look at the market right now, it's definitely a corrective month at this moment, right? We are definitely at, like if we literally look, let's look at this pair, right? It's very corrective right? Price is extremely corrective right now. This has been going on since September, right? September was very smooth. Look at that. It was very smooth in September, but since October and it's now going on November, it's, it's not the best. It's a very corrective, very corrective, uh, month. I feel like we're about to have a huge impulsive wave for So for the next couple of months, I really feel like it's going to be extremely, extremely good, but this happens in the market. This is part of the game. I want you guys to understand this is part of the game. You're going to have corrective months and you're going to have impulsive months where you're going, you're just doing amazing, right? So at this point, um, right now, and uh, right now we're looking at, I'm, I'm currently looking at GBP USD for short, right? So as soon as we get priced up here, then we can probably sell it, right? But at the end of the day, October just wasn't the best, right? It just wasn't the best. Um, and it was very corrective. I've had a lot of ups and I've had a lot of downs, but this is why you record it. So you can get a, you can get further confirmation. So if we look at the rolling out, I've only recorded to August. Like I said, I wanted to, I, I reached out to my broker to get all the information for January cause they consolidated it right into one thing. And I don't like that. 
um, but I, I rather know all the history that I have so I can plug it in. But it's all good, right? It, it is what it is. Um, I, I have it recorded in my Notion though. So that's the best part. I have it recorded in my Notion. So here we're going to, let's see, what pairs have I traded heavily? Um, I can't really remember. What trade, was it USD, USD JPY was the last pair? Um, I can't remember. But let's just pay attention to these. On high probability setups, let's look at this, right? So I've taken an even even amount of wins on high probability and valid. That's bad. So I'm 50-50 with high probability and valid trades. That means I need to reduce my valid and 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 improve my high high quality, right? So I've taken equal losses from high probability and valid and I've actually taken one more valid trade than I have high probability trade. Now, my high probability trades, as you can see, I have massive returns on those, right? So I have great returns on these uh, high quality trades and then I have low, like I'm around break even when it comes to the valid, right? So I still need to reduce. There are times when you take invalid trades, that's actually part of the game. You can't really control that, right? So that's part of the game. You wanna, you're gonna take losses, right? So now we're gonna talk about the different types of entries that I take. So I take an aggressive entry and I take a conservative entry, right? So this is just how I specifically trade. This is how I specifically do my math. Um, this is, I take, I have more wins. I'm sorry, I have more wins in conservative than I do aggressive. Um, I took one break even on aggressive, one loss on, a, on aggressive, and I have overall 14 trades total, right? So, I mean, I definitely conservative, which is like the break and retest method, obviously is gonna have way better returns than you just taking an aggressive entry. So you gotta pay attention to these things um, when it comes to that. And for me, I'm paying attention saying, I need to take more conservative entries, right? Because I'm winning more on conservative entries, especially if it's a high quality conservative entry, right? So my watch list, most trades are on a watch list. That's good. I mean, if it's on a wild cards or I, I just don't put, I don't take trades that's really not on my, my watch list and your mind you your watch list um evolves and and changes throughout the week depending on what the market does so it's not like i'm taking a trade strictly off of another another watch list or something like that or maybe a signal or something like that i take all my trades by myself and i and i evolve my watch list all the time so i've taken 28 trades total 21 trades is on my watch list seven trades is on my wild cards right so this is the first entry so my first entry I take a lot of I take a lot of um, first entries. I don't do a lot of added positions. I, as you can see, when I start adding positions, um, I don't make a lot of returns. But when I do, just take the initial entry, I get a lot of reward from it. I, that I, that tells you what I need to work on, right? So I need to work on adding and gaining more capital. But for me, the reason why I don't do a lot of scale ins is for the fact of I only have. Um, I only work on only only risk most like at most three percent. I only have three positions open at a time, so I'm not trying to scale like with 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 so many of those so many scale ins. So over here, as you can see, I trade a lot of GBP AUD. I trade a lot of GBP USD. I trade a lot of gold, right? I trade a lot of uh, NZD USD, but uh, but look at the pro look at how it look at how it happens. I'm overall up 9.38%. I've taken 28 trades, 12 losses, um, one break even, and 15 wins. Right? So obviously we need to I need to work on and if, and I know this will be fixed when I reduce the amount of valid trades that I have that I take. Right? So I want it to be around 80 20. 70 20 will be cool. But if when I start reducing the amount of valid traits, my win ratio and my win percentage will go up immensely, right? So this isn't my win rate, by the way, this isn't my win rate. Now, I'm not a nine out of 100 win ratio, but it's telling me the percentages that I've specifically taken um, over the specific week. So I, wanna, I wanted to go ahead and break this down for you, family. I wanted you to understand how everything works out. So hopefully you enjoyed my October analytics when it comes to my performance in trading. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If that's something that you're into, hit that notification bell and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.